Spending and Savings Plan. Financial Blueprint. Money Management. No matter what you call it, a budget, budget can be put together in about 30 minutes. In this video, we'll reveal our four-step formula for creating a basic budget. And along the way, we're going to give you lots of tips and strategies to make the process even easier. But if you don't know us, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. And this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. At its heart, a monthly budget is merely a plan. It tells you what's coming in and what's going out. But before we get started, there are some things you actually need to know about budgets. The first of which is budgeting is an inexact science. It's always in flux, no matter how hard you try to nail it down, life has a way of happening and changing it. You also need to be aware of the fact that it does take a little while to get the hang of budgeting. When we started budgeting, it was a full four or five months before we finally figured out that we had added everything we felt we needed to to the budget and that we had culled down everything we did not need in the budget. Things that we simply needed to spend less of or spend none of. So it takes a little while for the budget to work. And what happens is we've heard from so many people that say, I tried budgeting, didn't work. You really need to be prepared to give it a little bit of time and then you'll find the budget that fits you and your income and your lifestyle. You might say it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. As you go along with the budget, you'll get much better at defining exactly what it needs to tell you. There are a couple of things you'll need to gather in order to create your budget. The first of which is your most recent paycheck stub. You'll also need a copy of at least one month of expenses from your checking account. And then you'll need some highlighters. And then finally, you'll need to have either a blank piece of paper or our budget spreadsheet. To make this process go a little smoother, we did make a spreadsheet that does most of the math for you. It calculates across the columns for each month and down as you go through the categories. So this should make the process go a lot quicker for you. First step in creating your budget is to know your income. Now this sounds pretty simple on the face of it. Some of you actually receive one paycheck a month, two paychecks a month, or you're paid weekly. And that seems pretty much like it's going to be the same from week to week unless you work some overtime. But some of you have some erratic uh, income and it's not the same from week to week. So the best thing for you to do is to actually look and see all of your paychecks across at least six months, 12 months is better, but if all you can get together is six months, that's fine. And you're going to total those and average at least six months of income. That's going to give you a good basis on which to budget, knowing in your heart some months may be a little higher and some months may be a little bit lower. Remember that if you're self-employed and you live in the United States, you need to consider 30% right off the top for taxes. Now, if you live outside the country, you need to know how much your country charges for income tax. Now, you're also going to want to deduct before you subtract 30% for the income tax, you're going to want to subtract any kind of expenses that you have as a small business owner. So you have your basic income as a business owner minus all of your expenses minus 30% for taxes. What you're left with, that is the amount that you can budget on. Periodic income might include things like freelance work or maybe a side gig or possibly some bonuses from work. It's up to you whether you include this income in your monthly budget or not. We've done it both ways. There are times when the budget was super tight and we're like, mm, we're going to have to figure that into our monthly budget. And there have been a lot of other years where we decided to go ahead and take that income that came very sporadically throughout the year and just use it toward reaching our goals. Whichever way you do it is fine, but you need to decide ahead of time which way you're going to do it. Step number two is finding mm -hmm. out where your money is going. Now, this is just a matter of tracking it. When Hope and I started this process, we got a simple ledger book and just started writing down everything that we spent money on. That way we knew at the end of the month what we were spending and where it was going. But there's a lot of different ways to track your money. 
there are some easier ways to figure <laughs> out basically where you're spending your money. Thank goodness most of us are creatures of habit and you either pay for the vast majority of your expenses with either a written check or you send the payments automatically through your checking account or you use a debit card or you use a credit card. Whichever method you most use, that is the statement you want in front of you. I mentioned a little earlier, you should have your most recent checking statement in front of you and that is where you're going to get a really super good basic idea of where your money is going. Here are the basic categories for any budget. And believe it or not, budget categories, there aren't that many of them. That's why people, they, they feel like it's very overwhelming because they're like, oh, there's a whole lot of budget categories. Really, there's only basically seven or eight budget categories. Mm -hmm. So let's go through each category one at a time and we'll expand these as we go. But first, let's just name them off. The first one is housing. What goes under housing? Now, there are some items included in housing that seem really like you would automatically understand this is housing, like your mortgage or your rent payment. That is very clear. But there are actually some other things involved in keeping that roof over your head that you may not think about offhand. And these can change depending on your circumstances. If you own your home, mm -hmm. you're going to have more expenses here. If you rent, you're going to have mm -hmm. much less. So let's just take the ones that you own your home. You're going to have property taxes. You'll also have home maintenance. Now, some people take home maintenance out of their emergency fund. Others have a specific home maintenance category. We do uh, a good kind of rule of thumb for home maintenance is one to two percent each year of the value of your home. The next one would be your water bill, then your gas and electric. That's your utility bill that you pay mm -hmm. every month. Maybe your sewer bill because ours comes separate from the rest of our water bill. There is your cell phone, garbage fees, internet, and also if you have a landline, that goes under that category as well. So that's everything that's pretty much encompassed in housing. Pick a color of highlighter and that highlighter color is going to go for all of those categories. We'll show you in just a couple of minutes. Make sure you stick with us because we're actually going to show you a screenshot of our actual checking account statement. And I did exactly what I'm telling you to do. And I went through and highlighted each of the categories that was shown on that checking account statement. The next category would be transportation. Now, that can fall under many different mm -hmm. things depending on how you get from place to place. If you own your own car, then all of these are going to be revolved around your car expenses, and that would be saving to replace your car. It would be your insurance on your car, gas, maintenance, mm -hmm. upkeep, anything that you put money into in order to get from point A to point B. If you ride a bus, you have to have money for bus tickets. If you take a taxi, you have to have money for that. However you get around, you have to have a budget category that covers those expenses. Now, as we mentioned, we'll show you the spreadsheet in just a minute. The nice thing about the spreadsheet is you can plug in numbers like the amount that you're paying for that car payment, and then you can make that zero. When you zero it out, the total at the bottom of that spreadsheet is going to reflect that you took that car payment off, and it immediately allows you to see what will happen to your budget after you no longer have that car payment. It's amazing how much extra wiggle room you can get into your budget once you pay off those debts. And you can use that exact same process on the spreadsheet with any single debt that you owe. Another category, and this is a big category for most of us, is food. The next thing, of course, you're going to find is debt. Any payments that you are making in order to pay back debt, those need to be highlighted in the same color highlighter. The next category, and this is a big one in our household, and that's insurance. And there's a Huge. lot of different kinds of insurances from life insurance, health insurance, homeowners insurance, car insurance. Mm -hmm. We are just inundated with insurance. insurance. <laughs> but that's a very important category and we have to budget for it. Insurance, believe it or not, is absolutely our most expensive and biggest category in our budget. Tell us what your biggest budget category is. Tell us in the comments section. Our next category, and this encompasses a lot of subcategories, <laughs> we call it lifestyle expenses. So what do we mean by that, Hope? Lifestyle expenses are anything that you don't live in, you don't drive, or you don't eat. <laughs> Basically, if it's anything else, it's probably going to be a lifestyle expense. Let us give you some ideas. Well, that would be like clothing, gifts, 
Christmas expenses, personal mm -hmm. care, haircuts. Even over-the-counter <laughs> medications. We put that under lifestyle. That's your choice where you put all these expenses, but they need to go under something. It would also include school supplies, anything that you have to get together for your education, and of course, vacations. We don't want to leave vacations out. If you have children and you pay them allowances, we always put that under lifestyle. I don't know if it reflected our lifestyle or a kid's lifestyle. <laughs> Maybe the fact we had to pay it affected our lifestyle, but the amount we paid affected our kid's <laughs> lifestyle. Yes. Another important category is that we, we need to have fun and have some recreation mm -hmm. in our lives, so we call this fun money or hobby money. Here's the whole point of this. If you find yourself, and here's what happens, people make a budget and they have too many expenses that aren't accounted for. And they wind up going, well, you know what? That's not my budget, but I really feel like I want or need to spend it anyway. And that's how they wind up thinking that the budget isn't working. Well, it's not that the budget isn't working, it's that the budget is incomplete. We actually did a whole video a while back on like all the reasons why our first budget absolutely was horrible. It was an epic failure. So if you want to see what we did really, really wrong, that is a fun video. We'll make sure it's linked up above and in the description of this video. Another item in the lifestyle category is miscellaneous. Those are maybe small amounts of money that you spend that probably don't fit into any one of your subcategories. So as long as you're not spending, let's say, over $100 yep. a month on miscellaneous, then that should work for you. You need to have just a little bit of headroom in your budget to cover those. The seventh major budget category would be savings. Now you need to be consistently saving towards some goals. For some of you, that savings category isn't going to be uh, a lot of margin when you first begin budgeting, but as you begin to manage your money more effectively and you begin to pay off debt, that savings category will start to grow. So we think it's really important, if nothing else, to keep you motivated to pay off your debt, to just have savings as a line item there in your budget, even if right now there's not very much in that category. A very important category for Hope and I, based on our faith, is mm -hmm. tithing. This is something that we actually take off of the top yeah. of our income. Anything that's coming in, we tithe 10% to our church. We do not call that a, an optional amount. We do that no matter what. And we've been doing this since the days of paycheck to paycheck living. Absolutely. And the only reason that we mentioned it last is because we understand that that category isn't going to apply to all of you. But just to make it clear, we don't even begin the budgeting process until we have given a tithe to our church. And on top of that, we have added an additional amount for charitable giving to organizations that are really important to us. Now you have the eight budget categories. If you need to, go ahead and pause this recording and grab that checking account statement, use those highlighters and highlight each of the areas and each of the expenses in that checking account statement that also go under each of these eight categories. Now, if you find an expense and you're like, I have no idea, <laughs> I don't know what this goes under, don't worry, just skip it for now. Don't highlight it. Don't do anything with it because we'll show you the spreadsheet in just a few minutes. And as we fill in the spreadsheet, you're going to see that maybe some of those expenses that you didn't know what to do with, either they were an anomaly, like mm -hmm. a one-time expense that's never going to occur again. And really, if it's not going to occur again, there's no sense like formalizing and categorizing it under a budget category. You're just not going to spend that money over again. Uh, and if it's something that doesn't fit into a budget category right now, as we go through the spreadsheet, you'll see, oh, that's where it goes. So don't worry about that. What we want you to do is highlight that checking account statement. Now, while you're doing that, we're going to pull up on the screen an example of our actual checking account. We did exactly what we're asking you to do, and you're going to see that right there. And remember, don't get overwhelmed or bogged down by all of the details. The greatest thing you can do is start this process. Once you get started, I believe you'll find that a lot of this is just going to fall into place. We told you we created some spreadsheets to make the budgeting process oh so much easier for you. If you want all the details on how you can get your own copy of this spreadsheet, there will be a link in the description of this video. Just click on it. It'll give you all the details.
let's take a look at the spreadsheet and see what that looks like. You'll see all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen that we've left places for you to put your income in. In this case, we're going to do a theoretical budget. Larry, how much did they make in paycheck number one? Well, they made $1,400. All right. Uh, in the second paycheck. Uh, they did some overtime. Let's put them at $1,800. $1,800. That's a lot of overtime. There you go. I know. You worked hard, guys. You did a side gig. $280. You made $280. Not only that, you did such a great job. Took you two hours. You made $280. <laughs> and they're going to have you come back and do it every single month. So that side gig goes into your monthly budget planning. So the total income for that month would be $3,480. It automatically adds it up right there where it says income total. Now, this is going to represent your average monthly income. So you don't want to pick a month that is super high or super low in order to figure this average monthly income. What you can do is take your check stubs from the last 12 months. Larry was paid bi-weekly, so mm -hmm. that would be 28 check stubs. He would add them all up and then divide by 28. That number would represent his average, average yeah. paycheck. So you m might want to do that when you're figuring out this. This budgeting process will represent an average month for you. And remember, it's going to vary. Some months may be a little higher. Some months may be a little lower. But you have to have a place where you are starting from. As you scroll down, we have lots of area for expenses. And these expenses are the exact same areas that we just gave you the exact same categories only we have them all typed out for you your rent or mortgage we're going to say they have a mortgage payment of uh, a mortgage payment of let's say 800 800 that's a fair mortgage payment whoops mm -hmm. i almost made it 8000 which would be <laughs> not an average mortgage payment. Let's say the property taxes are $200 a month. You live in a place where property cheap. taxes are really Oops, cheap. You put 2,400. Oh, 2,400. <laughs> well, that would be not cheap property taxes. Yeah. All right, $200 a month, which means 2,400 for the year. There's where my brain dip happened. All right, home maintenance. Some people have home maintenance. Uh, they take it out of their emergency budget. Mm -hmm. We say you're going to budget uh, up to 2% of your home's value every month toward home maintenance. So let's just say um, our house is worth $150,000. So we're going to say uh, that is about $250 a month that we're, we're going to set aside for home maintenance. Um, water, gas, and electric. Now, here's the tip for doing that because that seriously varies throughout the year, especially gas and electric. Mm -hmm. Get a hold of your utility company and ask them to send you uh, your payments for the last 12 months. And then you're merely going to add them up and divide by 12. And that number represents the average utility bill for you. Do exactly the same thing for the water bill. Your cell phone bill. Oh, look at this, Larry. Which cell phone company do they have? Tell them. They have Mint Mobile. You have Mint Mobile because y'all are paying $15 a month. All right. So I'm going to show you down here. I'm going to scroll all the way down. As I scroll down, I'll do it slowly so you can see we have transportation in there. In case you have a car payment. Oh, before I scroll the, any farther, the car payment let's put a car payment in. What's their car payment, Larry? Uh, let's say it's $500. That's probably about an average car payment. So your car payment is $500. You're going to scroll down to the bottom after you populate these areas. Now, let's say that you have no idea what you're paying for insurance per month. That's the kind of information. Remember I told you when you fill in this spreadsheet, you're going to figure out what you're missing. That'd be the missing information mm -hmm. that you're going to go, you're going to find it, and you're going to plug it in here. This is also totaling all the way down at the bottom. And you'll notice in this spreadsheet, I did leave some room for you to add some short, medium, and long-term goals. These are the uh, areas that uh, that you may or may not have room for in your regular monthly budget. But if you do, it's great to go ahead and add those goals to your monthly budget. It totaled, we have $1,765 in expenses. And we let's have- Let's take out that car payment. Let's take out the car payment. Let's say I love it. you've paid off the car, yes. you've done your due diligence. 
Good Wham. job. That expense is what gone. What happened to your budget? Wow. Boom. You have 500 more dollars to work with every month. That's why this spreadsheet I think is so fun mm -hmm. because we use this spreadsheet for this. <laughs> we fill it in at the first of every year in January and then we play with it. What would happen if we did this? What would happen if we cut eating out to once a month? which we don't even go out to once a month. But mm -hmm. let's say you're going out four times a month. You're like, hmm, what would happen if I only went out once a month instead of four times a month? Mm -hmm. You can make that adjustment on here and nothing set in stone. You can always put it back to four times a month if you feel like you need to and put that back in the spreadsheet. But if you cut that in a... Um, by three fourths and you've got 25% of the amount of money you were spending eating out, then you're gonna be able to scroll down to the bottom and immediately see what that did to your budget. Yeah. You can use this same method with any other debt that you are paying off. Cause you'll notice I tried to put all kinds of debt in here. You may not own those debts, that's perfectly fine. In fact, that's like really good if you don't owe those debts. Yeah. But if you do, then it's really nice to be able to zero that out and see the effect it's gonna have on your budget and how much extra money you're going to have to work with every single month. Now, as we mentioned, this is your average monthly budget. You have to have some place where you're starting but your income, your expenses, all that stuff is gonna fluctuate throughout the year. So how do you track that? You do that on the other half of this spreadsheet. So you have a place where you can put in all of your income for January, February, March, and I have made it so that as you scroll across any of these green areas, that totals. So the yellow areas are filled in. This will total everything for November and it will add it to this. This is cumulative, so it will tell you how much your income has been thus far in the year. It will do exactly the same thing for every single expenses. one of yeah. these expenses. Yeah. And it only totals these columns from January to December. It does not take into account these. So don't worry if you have a number in here, it's not gonna show up on your total all the way over at the right hand side of the expense sheet. But this allows you to be able to know at a glance. I think it's so important to be able to know mm -hmm. within say 60 seconds, how are we doing in any one area of our budget? This spreadsheet, guys, I created this years and years <laughs> ago, and it saved us so much time and energy. Now, of course, if you want a copy of these spreadsheets, uh, you can do that. We also have, it comes along with lots of other information on budgeting that we put together for you. Uh, you'll find a link to those. Uh, spreadsheets and the information on budgeting, it's going to be in the description of this video and you can go check it out. You know, what's, what's nice about doing this is that mm. it takes all the gray area out of knowing how much money you can spend on all the categories that you have that you need to spend money for. It gives you peace of mind mm -hmm. and then you know for sure if you're going to go out to Menards and pick up that whatever it is that you need mm -hmm. for your house, you know you've got the money in there for it instead of saying, well, I hope we're going to do okay. Mm -hmm. it, it takes all the guesswork out of it. Frankly, it helps you sleep better at night. Budgeting, as we said, doesn't take a lot of time. Within 30 minutes, you can have this basic mm -hmm. monthly budget set up and know that you are on track for 2023, or at least you have a plan for 2023. However, having said that, there are some areas that it's really easy to have them derail your budgeting process. And we did a video on it. And if you'd like to know more about what possibly could go wrong, and not only that, how you can fix it when it does go wrong, there's a link to that video right over there. Go check it out.